This is Jay Krishnamurti's first public discussion in Sanan, 1973. This is not a talk by me, but a dialogue between us. A dialogue is a conversation between two people who are interested in the same thing and fairly serious and who are not merely expressing their opinions but rather penetrating much more deeply beyond the mere casual opinions. I think that's what the meaning of that word, dialogue, is. I think that word is better than discussion. You know, if we could, during these seven days, investigate and penetrate much more deeply in detail any of the issues that we have. And that needs a, a seriousness, not a casual, superficial interest. So, what shall we talk about together this morning. Sometimes there is conflict between rituals and emotions. Sometimes there is a conflict between emotion and the intellectual reasoning. Reasoning. <coughs> Meaning of life meaning of life as action and relationship. Jealousy seems to be related somewhat to love, and if there is no jealousy, how do we come up on that thing called love? Ah, pardon. I have not understood the question, sir. How could observing yourself with the observer as we do help as the flexibility of God? How can we observe, and as we generally do with the observer, how can we observe without the observer? How can the answer be Yes, sir? Is that the question? Big pardon, I can't hear. Some people say they find that reality or that strange thing through drugs. Now, what shall we talk about after all these questions? Which do you think is the most important? We've had conflict between reason and emotion. 
what is the relation, what is the meaning of life, and its relationship to action and relationship, what is, is to observe without the observer, but we always seem to observe with the observer. Uh, what is the, is the experience that one has through drugs the same as the experience of reality? Now, which among those? Did I leave out one? I think I did. The jealousy. Beg your jealousy. jealousy. What is... We know jealousy is related to love and is... Without jealousy, what is love? Now, which of these do you think is most important so that we can discuss it, talk it over. Learning how to look. Is that, shall we just, do you want to talk about that? Yes? Right. Sorry, madam, we'll perhaps answer your question later. How to observe without the observer? What is the relationship between the observer and the observed? And what is the structure and the nature of the observer? Right? That's what we're going to talk over together. How does one observe? How do you listen? Let's begin with that very simply. Here you are, sitting there, and the speaker here, and when you hear a question of this kind, what is your reaction to it? How do you hear that question? Please, let's go into a little bit. How do you listen to this question? The question being, the observer, the observed, what is the relationship between the observer and the observed? And what is the observer? That is the question. Now, you listen to that question, and what is your reaction to it? How do you listen to it? Do you listen to find an answer? Do you listen to see if you are observing anything as an outsider who is looking in? And do you interpret that question according to your knowledge? Your, so how do you listen to that question? Please, just give a little attention to this. I heard that question. And I had no reaction to it. I just heard it. Then I'm going to investigate it. I don't hear and then form a conclusion, and according to that conclusion, investigate. You see the difference? Are we... Please, I am not talking. During these seven days, I am not talking. We are, as friends, talking 
going into this matter amicably, intelligently exploring. Most of us, when we hear a question of that kind, are apt to translate that question and draw an abstraction from that question. Hmm? An abstraction being <coughs> to abstract, to draw some a statement, a factual statement into an idea. The idea is an abstraction. <coughs> Most of us are inclined when we listen to a question of this kind, draw a conclusion which is an abstraction. Or you merely listen without any conclusion. Then the mind is capable of investigating further. But if you draw a conclusion, an abstraction, an idea, you block yourself from further investigation. Right? Is that clear? So, what are we doing? Are we saying, I don't understand, it's an impossible question. What does it mean? So one has to hear the statement very clearly. The statement is, what is the observer? What is the relationship of the observer to the observed? And is it possible to observe without the observer? Those, those are the things involved in that question. If I say to myself, no, I can never observe without the observer, I've blocked myself. So I must listen to that question without any reaction, right? Just listen. Then let's proceed. What is the relationship between the observer and the observed? What is the observer? So let's begin investigating what is the observer, right? Go on, sir. What is the observer? I think your question, madam, will be answered about what is the meaning of life and its relationship to um, action and the relationship between, to, between people. It comes to the same thing, which is, wh who is the observer that's always watching, always listening? always translating, asserting, dominating, choosing, discarding, asserting, aggressive. Who is this observer? The me. What's up? The memory. <laughs> go, let's go slowly into it. Otherwise, we shan't penetrate very deeply. You say the me, memory. What do you mean by memory? The brain. Huh? The brain. <laughs> no, madam, just... You have a memory, haven't you? Of being hurt. Or the memory of guilt. The memory of failure. The memory of frustration the memory of jealousy. Now, what is that memory? Look, sir, you call me an idiot. I won't call you, you call me. 
Now, what has taken place? I hear those words. I translate those words. And the memory or the image I have about myself, that image is hurt, isn't it? Right? That image has been created by me by a series of incidents which has given me the image which says, I am a great man or I am this. And you call me an idiot and I don't like it, I am hurt. The image is hurt, right? And that hurt is part of the, of the image which is created by thought. That thought is the response of memory, right? So the memory says to me, says, I have been hurt. The image, the memory, the greater image of myself as being somebody, and that image has been hurt, that has left a mark on my mind. So when I meet you next time, you're my enemy. I don't like you. Right? So when you say memory, there are thousand memories we have, conscious as well as unconscious memories. So, memory is the past. There is no memory now or in the future. The memory that operates now is the memory of the past. That memory of the past acting now in relationship distorts observation. Right? Please, is this clear? I'm not talking, we are discussing. I must keep this always in my mind, otherwise I'll, turn, I'll become a... <laughs> I will talk, which I don't want to do. So. The past, the memory, the image, the hurt is the observer. Right? Do, please, I am a Hindu or a Catholic or a communist or a whatever it is. And that has been drilled into me from childhood, that has become a memory. And that memory, that conditioning is the past. The past, wait sir, wait sir, one moment, we will come to it sir, that past dictates or reacts to any incident in the present. That's now, sir. What, what do you object, sir? Huh? Are we sure that the memory, that memory is the past? Are you sure? La memoria è passata. Sì. So if you had no memory of the past, what would happen? If I didn't know my name, where I lived, I lost my passport, what would happen? I would be in a state of amnesia, in a state of blank. Hmm? Memory is the result of 
experience and knowledge. So memory is knowledge, experience, which is obviously the past. I met you yesterday. You were introduced to me. Your name has been told to me. So I meet you today and I recognize you. The recognition is born out of the memory which remained when you were introduced to me. That's simple enough, isn't it? Or we show that memory is the past. I have been hurt by you. The hurt is the past, which is the memory of your saying something to me which displeased me. So that I think nobody, I mean, this is fairly clear. So the observer is the conditioned entity of memory, tradition, and knowledge, experience. So my conditioning as a Hindu, Buddhist, Catholic, capitalist, and so on, so on, my conditioning by the culture in which I have lived that becomes the observer. And that observer is watching everything. So the past is choosing, discerning, translating, acting. That's it. No? No, it's not what I say, please be... It is reasonable. Now, what is the relationship of that observer to the observed? Right? Now, what is the observed? Is there such a thing as the observed different from the observer? Please, this, go with a little bit. I am asking, what is the observed? Is the observed independent of the observer? You discuss this, I listen for a while. Come on. You say it is the same. How do you know? Dites en français ou... Ça, là... Look, I am asking you, what is the relationship between the observer and the observed? And is the observed different from the observer? <coughs> wait, wait. Because this is very important to understand. I'll go into a little bit, you will see. It. It's very important to understand whether the observer is different from the observed. What is the relationship of the observer to the observed? If there is a division between the observer and the observed, then there must be conflict because any division it produces conflict. So 
out of that conflict, violence, all the rest of the things follow. So I must be very clear in the understanding of this fact, whether the observer is different from the observed, and if the observer is not, then what is the observed? Now let's begin slowly. What is the observed? Is it different from the observer? Huh? Come on, man. C'est ça. That is, when you look at the mountain, the mountain is obviously different from you. I hope so. Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute, Mera. When I look at that microphone, obviously that is different from me. And the tree, and, and so on, so on, so on. When I look at you, you are obviously different from me. Right? You have a brown hair, red hair, whatever it is. Physically, you are different. Now, let's go a little deeper. When I observe my jealousy, right? Is jealousy different from the observer? We have said that, madam, we have been through that. When I look at the mountain, the mountain is not the observer. When I look at a tree, the tree is not the observer. When I look at the flowing water, the, the water is not the observer. You are different from the observer, the me who is looking at you, obviously. Now, I, next step. I am jealous. Now, is jealousy different from the observer? Huh? Be quite, be quite sure. This is really important. Please, don't casually say no. The whole structure depends on this. The structure of living a totally different kind of life depends on this. Allora, uh, bene, bene, understand. You want the moment I am aware that I am that jealousy, hmm, then jealousy ceases. But I am not asking that question. I am asking, is jealousy different from the observer? I wait a minute, sir. The observer, I said, is the past. The observer, I said, is the experience, is the knowledge, which says, I am jealous. Right? So, I am asking, is jealousy different from the observer? Come on. Jealousy is included in the observer? So you are saying jealousy is part of the observer. Is that right? Huh? Oh, come on. Don't be shy about it. Don't always be right, wanting to be right. We may, I may be wrong too. So I'm saying, I'm asking, the observer says I'm jealous. Is that jealousy different from the observer? Or the observer is the observed, in this case, you understand? So the observer is jealousy. So there is not a difference between the observer and jealousy. Now, which means, stop a minute there, stop a minute there. You'll see that.
they just, he says there is a division. There is a difference, but no division. Look at the, the difficulty. There is a division. There, and there is a difference, but no division. The, come on. So, the whole is different. Is is the part. The part is the whole. So, so you are saying the whole is different from the part, right? Is that so? The whole is different from the part. What is the whole? The whole image of me is brought about through memory. And memory is, tells me I have been jealous and now I recognize it as jealousy and therefore I am, I, through the process of recognition, I, the present experience of jealousy is translated through the, into the past. There is, please, look, he is saying the whole is different from the part. Right? Right? Not divided. Not, 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 not divided. Yes, not divided. The whole is different from the part and yet not divided. The whole, just a minute, the whole is jealousy. Envy, greed, anxiety, guilt, the feeling of ambition, loneliness, the lack of love, and so the whole is made up of all this. Huh? Right? So, you pick one part which is jealousy and say, and look at that jealousy with the rest of the part. So what are you doing? You look at one fragment with the many other fragments. So, wait a minute, you are discovering something. Fragments make up the whole. Huh? Wait, wait, sir. Discover it, find out for yourself the fragments of jealousy, envy, greed, deceit, lying, fear, pleasure, guilt, all that are the various parts of the whole. The whole are made up of, the, of these many parts. Just a minute. So the, the whole is the content of these. Right? The whole is m being made up of these many things. Is that the whole? That's all, sir. Quite right. That's right. So we put names or labels, we give names or labels to many parts. I, mean, I say, look what you are doing. Hmm? By naming it as jealousy, by naming it as, as envy, by naming it as guilt, so the name is, has become important. Not the fact. Are you following this? Now, why do you give names at all? Pete said, I, I must do inquire into it. Don't just. Why do I? Please, just listen. I feel guilty. Why do I give it a name? Guilt. Why do I do that? Because you want to push it away when you see it again. 
Yes? Please just listen. I feel this thing called guilt, because I have done something so on and so on, and I feel guilt. Now why do I name it? Why can't I look at it without naming it? Right? But why do I name it? Do, please, sir, you're going too fast for me. Let's go slowly. Why do I name it? Huh? You say I give a name to it to put it away from me. I deny, by naming it, I deny it. I, by naming it, I separate it. Now you're not on. It's a habit. All right, then it doesn't answer any of my questions. Some people have been conditioned that way, and other people have been conditioned that way. I think some people have been conditioned to feel guilty all the time, and other I'm not talking about other people all the time, or some people. Not all the time. I'm asking. We have been taught, living in this culture, to do so. I'm asking why. What, sir? Have you noticed? I just meant, let's go slow. I feel guilt. I name it. Why do I name it? To, I name it instantly, don't I? Huh? Immediately. Why? Come on, madam. Je n'ai pas compris, mais là, pas un mot. Le facteur. The observer arrives at that moment. You are not going into this sufficiently deeply. Look, sir, let me, may I give me two minutes. I feel guilty because I have done something and so on. Why do I name it? What is the process of naming it? Go slow. Oh, pizza. I, two minutes. Give me a minute, sir. I am talking, if you don't mind. Two minutes and then you have the floor or the platform, whatever you want. I feel guilt. Why do I name it? I name it instantly. The naming of it is the recognition of it. Therefore, I have had that feeling before. Right? Right? And having had it before, I recognize it now. But through recognition, I strengthen what has happened before. Right? You're f right? You're following this? No? Are you following this? I have strengthened the memory of the previous guilt by saying, I'm, I feel guilty. So, see what is happening. Every form of recognition strengthens the past. And recognition takes place through naming. So, by and through recognition, I strengthen the past, which, which means, why does the mind do this? Don't answer me, please. Just, I'm in the, Why does the mind do this? Why does it always strengthen the past? By saying, I have been guilty. 
I am guilty. It is terrible to be guilty. How am I to get rid of this guilt? You follow? Why does it do it? Does it do it because the mind needs to be occupied with something? You understand? It needs to be occupied. Whether with God, with smoke, with sex, with something, it has to be occupied. Therefore, it's <coughs> it is afraid not to be occupied. Right? And in occupation, with the feeling of guilt, in that feeling there is certain security. At least I have got that thing. I have nothing else, but at least I have got that feeling of being guilty. So, what is happening? I am strength through recognition, which is the naming. I, the mind is strengthening a past feeling which has been which has happened before, and so the mind is constantly occupied with, what, with that feeling of guilt. And that gives it a certain occupation, a certain sense of security, a certain action from that which becomes neurotic. I am finished here, sir. So, what takes place? Can I, when the feeling arises, to observe it without naming. So I find when I do not name, the thing no longer exists. And I am afraid, listen to this carefully, I am afraid, the mind is afraid living in a state of nothingness, right? Therefore, it has to have a word. The word has become tremendously important. My country, my God, my Jesus, my Christian, the word. So the word, listen to this, the word is the past, the word is the memory, the word is the thought. So, thought divides. I won't, now I'm getting too complicated. I won't let you. That's enough. You see this? Yes, sir. Is it more and more difficult when, when, the, when the word strengthens the past? Right? After, after so many years. Yes, after so many years, I have felt guilty for years. And I realize now what I have, what I have done. Now, does that take a lot of time to get rid of it? Is that the question, sir? Or... Yes, yes, same thing. Isn't it? Does, does a well-established habit take time? This is a well-established habit of calling my, of feeling guilty all the time. Even animals have memory. Why should we get rid of memory? I've never said we must get rid of memory, madam. <laughs> Look, I must have memory in order to go to my house. I must have memory to talk English. I must have memory to come here and sit on this platform. I must have memory for the language I shall use. I must have, I have memory of riding a bicycle or riding a car. So memory is absolutely essential. Otherwise I couldn't function. Memory is knowledge. 
we must have knowledge. And that knowledge, listen to this, what takes place. Knowledge is word, right? Now, I have had the knowledge of previous guilt. When I call the present feeling guilt, I have strengthened the previous knowledge. And that knowledge is the observer. So, the observer looks at that feeling which I have now and calls it guilt. And therefore, in calling it guilt, he's the knowledge of the past is strengthened. Fairly simple and clear. Big pardon? That just it. Who is the observer? Is the observer different from the many fragments? He's one of the fragments, isn't he? Oh, for that. Yes. What acts? What sees and acts? Wait, sir, we haven't come to action yet. We have just come to the point, what is the observer? That's all we have talked about this, so far. We've said the observer is the conditioning, the conditioning is the culture in which it has been brought up, <coughs> with all the memories, knowledge, experiences. And that culture has told me educated me in guilt. And the observer is, we say, is different from the feeling of guilt. And we are saying, is the observer different from the thing which he calls the guilt? Or are they both the same? Of course, they're both the same when you give it an A. Now, let's proceed. Can you is there, no, what is the observed without the observer? Right? I mean, I've gone ahead. Now, what is the relationship between the observer and the observed? Does this all interest you? You are quite sure I'm not boring you? Right. Because, you see, if you go into this very deeply, <coughs> you will find that you eliminate conflict altogether, completely. And that's part of our culture, to be in conflict perpetually till we die. Now, we're pointing out something which will totally eliminate conflict altogether. So we are asking, what is the relationship of the observer to the observed? What is the relationship of the observer when he looks at the mountain? Generally, the relationship is coloured by prejudice. I look, the observer looks at that mountain. He recognises it as a mountain. So he calls it a mountain. The relationship between the observer and the, the thing called mountain exists, the relationship is based on the image which it has through education to call it a mountain. He has an image of mountain saw, and when he sees that mountain, he calls it a mountain. So the image which he has built through knowledge recognizes that thing and says that is mountain. And he says it's beautiful 
What, sir? Yeah, it says it's beautiful. It has got snow in it. I wish uh, I want to be at the sea. Uh, and so on. So, the relationship between the observer and the thing which is so high, he recognizes it because he has, you know, he has been instructed to call it mountain educated to call it mountain. Now I see, I always look at things through the images which my education and culture have given me. Man, woman, we and they, right? My and so on, so on. So, Can the mind observe without the word, without the image, without the conditioning? Half a minute, I've just asked a question. I've just asked a question. Please wait a minute. I see very clearly that when I observe, I observe through, the, through an image. The image or the symbol or the word put together by thought. The thought has created the culture and in that culture, that culture has shaped my mind and the mind says when it sees that uh, that thing very high calls it a mountain. Now, can I observe, can the mind observe without the image? Madam, we are not talking about dreams. Please, just hold on. Don't complicate the thing. It is complicated enough. Just go step by step. I am asking, must I go through it again? Can you observe that thing very high without the word, without the image? Beg your pardon? Wait a minute. I am asking. I am asking. We'll make it a little more complex a little later. Can I observe that mountain without the observer who is the past? The mountain is the present. <laughs> Can I observe that without the image which, which is the past? Come on, sir. Huh? You can. When you observe that way, is it an identification with the mountain? Obviously not. You are not the mountain. Thank God. Hmm? Or you may be. I don't know. What, sir? I'm... No, call it any name. Can you? I said, sir, can you observe it without the word, without the image? It may be the past image or the present image, just to observe without the image and the word. That's fairly easy. Now, can you observe me or your friend, your wife, your girlfriend, so on, boyfriend? Can you observe without the image that you have about her or him? Be pardon? Ah, 
un bambino oh, sorry a child can do this but we are not children we are not babies i'm please don't go let's go back to the babes i am asking you can you observe please listen can you observe the speaker your neighbor your wife your husband your girlfriend your boy without the image normally we can huh normally we can wait so so wait normally we cannot generally normalmente uh, we cannot so we look at a, another however intimate it be through the image which we have built about the other right right now why does the mind do this perché anche nelle precedenti esperienze non ha dato attenzione a quella forma e si è limitata a scivolare sopra dei nomi sì sì is the same thing is as before why do i create an image about you hmm? and why does the mind do this all the time huh it is my security just listen sir don't deny look at it it is my security if i had no image of you my relationship with you would be uncertain right <laughs> I mean, madam you suppose that but you that you may madam you may you may but most of us don't feel that so have little patience with us I have built an image about you because you have hurt me you have given me pleasure sexual or otherwise you have been a companionship a companion you have nagged me you have bullied me you have dominated I have built a picture about you that's a reality and that image is the past and i look at you through that image now why does the mind do this all the time i say you tell me you are a fool immediately an image you follow why does the mind do this all the time it's a way to defend oneself what sir it's a way to defend oneself so you, now it means you are saying the image building is to defend oneself right what is the one self <coughs> is that not also another image so you are defending one image by another image right now why does the mind do this all the time most of the time not all the time huh so you are say you are saying it does it because it's afraid or what is it afraid of wait a minute you say of not being we are not pleased just listen we are not discussing um, di- having a dialogue verbally actually we are experiencing you know we are going through this not just words 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 you say the mind does this because it's afraid is afraid of not be now what is be what is that wants to be we we are we are going to fight i know the feeling exists so the feeling exists now what is the thing that says that is protecting itself by saying i must be the be right we're going to find out sir huh we're going to find out sir are you questioning as if i don't understand are we questioning are you questioning that we're an image of the question is it a fragment 
I am not questioning, I am asking, sir. The gentleman said, we are afraid of not being. And I asked, what is this fear based on? Wait, sir, wait, sir. What is this fear of not being? What is it that wants to be? You understand, sir? What is it that wants to be and not being is afraid? Therefore, what is it that says, I must be? Which means, does it mean life, daily living, bread and butter, secure mm, shelter? Is that what it is afraid of? Not being, not getting food, clothes and shelter? Surely that's not. That's part of it. So what is it afraid of not being? Don't, don't say mind, memory. Please investigate it. Huh? of having no identity. Now, when you use the word identity, do you say identity with, you must use with. Identity with what? I want, please just listen, sir. I want to identify myself with my country. I say that's too absurd. With my, uh, what, with the flag, that's too absurd. With the church, that's so absurd. But now I want to identify myself. <coughs> now, what is myself and what is it to be identified with myself? Is there a myself or is the myself a series of words, images, which thought has put together calling myself? And with that I want to identify. How silly I am. I mean, I know it is there. That is the illusion. Wait, sir. That is our culture, that's our verbal statement, that's the way we live. We say, I have identified myself with my country, with my God, with my flag, with my politics, and so on. I have been identifying with all those. And I say, how stupid of me. It has led to a lot of mischief. Now I want to identify with myself. See, I've discarded all the identifications outside of me, now I want to identify myself with myself. What is myself? It's obviously a lot of images and words. And so I say, look, look what I'm doing. I'm always trying, mind is always trying to establish a fact which becomes a non-fact. always trying to defend itself with an idea, with an image, with a conclusion. And those are all words. And it says, that you discard. So the mind is afraid of being completely empty. Right? Therefore it says, I must be. Now, you do, mind never finds out what takes place if it is really empty. You follow? It's so afraid of being empty. Therefore, it must be occupied with the kitchen, with my sex, with God, with politics, with Mao, with a dozen things. Because it's so afraid to be completely empty. Right? No. So the, we must come back, sorry. The observer <coughs> is the past and the observed is the present, right? The mountain is the present. The jealousy, the feeling of jealousy is the present. But I, I identify it with the past. 
Now, can the, can the observer observe without the past, only the present, which means not naming jealousy. And if you do not name it, does jealousy exist? I mean, look, sir, I am jealous. I'm jealous because you've got a nicer car than I had, or more money, you look better, you, you look nice, you're smart, you're frightfully bright, intelligent, all the rest of it. I'm jealous of you. That's a fact. The feeling is there. And I've given it a name. I've said I'm jealous. And I see by calling it jealousy, I've strengthened the feeling. And I say to myself, silly, I realize this. Now, I, can I, can the mind observe without naming the feeling which is the present? Right? Then what takes place? I have not named, the mind has not named jealousy, sees the reason of it, the logic of it, the intelligence of it, and I, it says, I will not name, not as a will, it says, I will finish. Then what takes place? What? He says, duality comes to an end. Duality comes to an end. Therefore, there is only the present, right? I have not named it. The mind has not named it. Therefore, what takes place? You haven't done it. <laughs> if you have done it, you would see it. Naming, naming means, yes, sir, comparing, uh, conforming to the past, strengthening the past, and therefore creating a duality as the past and the present, which is jealousy. You follow? All that is involved in naming. Now, when I don't, when the mind doesn't do all that, what takes place? You are the feeling. Oh, now, now, now you're guessing. Now you're guessing. <laughs> now I'll put the question differently. What is the relationship between me and you? my wife, my husband, my daughter, my son, my etc. If I have no image, what is my relationship with you if I have no image about you? No, I, sir, you have to you have to find this out, sir. You can't answer this. Look, sir, I have lived with you. And all the troubles, the travail, the anxiety, the, the all that, the all that is has built an image in built an image in my mind. Now I have no image. And what is my relationship with you when I have no image about you? You can't answer this question, can you? 
if you are really honest, you can't answer this question. You can only answer it if you have really no image at all. And that's one of the most radical things in life, not to have an image about the mountain, you understand? About you, about the uh, person I live with, or all the rest. Not to have a single image about the country, about nothing. Image means opinion, idea, conclusion, symbol, the thought that builds up all the images. Then what is the relationship between you, who have an image, and a person who has no image. Come, don't answer me. This you have to find out. You know, that is love. The other thing is not love. Right? So, is the observer Different from the observed. Outwardly, yes. Inwardly, the observer is the observed. Therefore, there is no duality. And when there is no duality, what is left? Actually, what is? Right? Actually, what is? Can I? Can the mind observe what is? without giving it a name, name being symbol, imitation, conformity, recognition, just observe what is. Why we need, uh, why we need memory, why we control ourselves? Why do we need, why do we need memory? We need memory in order to ride a bicycle. I need memory in order to <coughs> talk English to, and so convey something to you, if you are interested in what I want to communicate. I need memory to function in a factory, in a business, uh, and so on. But <coughs> that memory is the image in relationship. Right, sir? Right? Now, that memory in relationship is the image. I have built an image about you, and you have built an image about me. Therefore, our relationship is between these two images. And that is what is so important to us. The image I have about you, and the image you have about me. And we live with these images. This relationship is called love, this rela in this relationship there is attachment and all the rest of it. And we cling to that, the image. <coughs> and we say the mind does it because it feels secure in having something, in having an image. If it has no image, it is empty. And we are afraid of being empty. And therefore we call, we must be something. So can the mind observe the present, the what is, without the memory, the image, the conclusion, the opinion, the judgment, the evaluation of the past, just to observe what is. So look, put it round the other way. Right, but um, quarter to twelve, we'll finish. Go much deeper, very much deeper. I love my brother, my son, my wife, my girl, my boy, and he dies. The fact is, he's dead. That is what is. Right? Can the mind observe what is without any movement of thought which is the past? You understand?
Oui, madame, je comprends ça. Non. C'est ça, c'est ça. Alors, je dois regarder le oui, Sans nommer. Oh, my side, I'm not... Please, let's go on. I, look. My son is dead. That's a fact. Then what takes place? The image I have built about my son through the years makes me makes the mind feel empty, lonely, hmm? sorrowful, self pity, and the hope I'll meet my son next, go to the medium seance, get in touch with all that business. <coughs> Which is, I do not observe, the mind doesn't observe, live with completely with what is. Without the image. Then what takes place? You understand? Oh, come on, sir. I have no self pity. I don't say, oh, I wish my son had lived, he would have been such a marvelous human being because he, he, you follow? I have no movement of thought at all. I oh, the mind lives only with the fact that my son is dead. Then what takes place? Have you ever done this? Yes or no? Sir, when, it, when it becomes quieter... No, sir, I'm not talking of quietness. Look, sir, this happens to every human being and living. Death is there. The bird, you, anything, you follow? What, do you, what takes place in you when, this, when you look at the fact without a single image? I can't tell you unless you come to it. You see what actually is. Yes, sir, I, I said that. Living, being, with actually what has taken place. Not deviate, run away, uh, let thoughts say, oh, this and that, and nothing. It's quiet. No, 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 no. You will find out if you... I hope nobody dies whom you love or you think you love. I hope you'll never suffer. But when you come to that, which inevitably comes to everybody in the world, not only all those people in living in Vietnam and Cambodia, but every day it is happening around you, then you'll find out what it means to live with what is completely without a single image. Look, I insult you. I say terrible things about you. Can you listen to me without the movement of thought that creates an image which hurts? Can you listen? Try it. Do it, and then you will see what an extraordinary change takes place. A change in which there's complete negation of every form of image. Therefore, the mind is never burdened with the past. It's like having a young mind, you understand? All right, tomorrow we'll continue.